Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the way you get to you did record. Yes, this got recorded on okay. the screen. Okay, cool. All right. So yeah. Yeah, Amen. Father God, we thank you this morning just for the privilege and opportunity to come and mm -hmm. just share the word of God with your people. We thank you uh, that they are good ground, about to receive a good word. And even as the word of God goes forth, we thank you that they'll not simply be hearers, but they will be doers of the word that they hear. We thank you, Father God, just for the love with which you've loved us and shown us through your son, Jesus Christ, that we could be new creations, Father God, that we could have new lives. And so oh, we Lord. thank you for that. And we honor you. We praise you. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've been sharing with you uh, this year, just dealing with the Christ life. And and so we've come pretty far this year. We've been dealing with it all this year. And uh, and so last last time I was before you, about two weeks ago, we were talking about sharing with you uh, concerning the Christ life. It involved loving God and loving people. Mm -hmm. And we said that that a lot of times, uh, if we don't understand, if we don't understand how God loves us, it really will be impossible for us to love others. Yes. And so here, here's two points that we're going to share with you from that message from last time, and then we're going to kind of keep moving forward. Uh, point number one was that grace isn't just God paying your sins through Christ, All right. but grace is also an, an empowerment from the Father to change. You know, so many people, you know, even Christians say, you know, that's just how I am, but you know, truth of the matter, God empowered you by his spirit to change. All right. You know, if you change your life, you can change the lives of people around you. Amen. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to influence everybody that I come in contact with for the cause of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, so grace isn't just God paying your sins, because that's what people like. You know, they like the fact that well, God's not going to hold my sins against me. And that's great. That's one part of grace. But in his grace, he also gave you his spirit that empowered you to be able to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So whatever change you can, you need to make in your life, this is what you have been empowered. If you're born again, if you've received Jesus Christ, you have been empowered by God to make that change. That's, that's one amen. Can I get about three or four amen. amens? Amen. Amen. You are empowered. So you got to really, you, that, that has to become real to you, that you are empowered <laughs> to change. The Bible says that the, the, the intent of God is that he will conform you into the image of his son. That's what God's intent is. He's in, his intent is to make you look more and more like Jesus Christ every day that you live down here. Amen. We, we say that people like the grace that doesn't hold them responsible for their sins. But many times people don't like the grace that makes them responsible to change. I mean, you, 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 ever, you ever work with people on jobs that they don't do the job they're supposed to do, that they were hired to do? And every time they don't do their job, they always find somebody else to blame for why they don't do their job? It's always somebody else's fault. No, when you took the job, they gave you an empowerment to do that job, didn't they? In fact, in fact, before you even agreed to work there, you probably understood what the responsibilities were going into it. Correct? Mm -hmm. So if you understood that, then you understood there were some things that you would have to do. And so many times, we, we are people who, who want the grace of God that will bless us, that will give us stuff, give us things. And nothing wrong with having things and stuff. But, but do we want the grace of God that will correct us to the degree that we'll start saying, you know what, I need to start living like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then not only say, and, and not make the excuse where, you know, well, you know, I, look where I came from. Look what I've been through. Look at the problem. Look, no, nobody's for me. Look at the color of my skin. You know, all these excuses. Look, you can do all things through Christ who strength, strength, strengthens you. The Bible says if God be for you, who can be against you? The question is, do you know that God's for you? <laughs> See, before you, it doesn't matter who doesn't like you. He'll make your enemies bless you. You just got to know that God is for you. And here's the thing, when God is for you, you have to also be for God. Amen. 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 A lot of people want God to be for them, but many times they are not for him. They're not for him in how they think, they're not for him in how they talk, and they're not for him in how they behave. Amen. The second point uh, is this, and this is what we kind of pick up from and build on this. God expects us to use what he has given us through grace. He expects us to use it. It's no different that if there's somebody telling me that they need to get somewhere and they don't have a car and they've just been walking everywhere and out of grace, I say, you know what, I'll buy you a car. So I buy you a car, you know, so you can get to where you got to get to, but then you call me the next day after having received the car full of gas, everything works on it, and you call me asking me to take you to work. And you got a driver's license. Uh, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> The intent of you getting the car was so that you would use what I put in your hands. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, amen. And, and that's how God, when you got born again, there were some things that God deposited into you that he expects you to use. God is a God of investment. He never does something without the, the desire of a return on your life. And we're the same way. We, we go to our jobs every day, and we go with the intent to make an investment, don't we? We go in with the intent to make an investment of our time, our talents, and our energies. And at the end of the week or every two weeks, we expect a return on what we put in. Your boss, your boss also has an expectation that when he hired you, there was he or she hired you, there was an expectation that they, they expect you to meet. Mm -hmm. And if you don't meet those expectations, guess what? They're not going to be happy with you. Amen. And it's not their fault if you signed on the dotted line saying you do the job. Amen. All right, so I want you to turn with me this morning to uh, look at Mark chapter 16. We'll start at Mark chapter 16, and uh, we're going to start at verse number 12. And again, so here's what we're going to deal with this morning. The Christ life is a life of responsibility. The Christ life is a life of responsibility. Mark chapter 16, we're going to start at verse number 12. All right, here's, here's what, I'm going to read this from the God's Word translation. It's going to read a little different from yours, but it just makes it a little clearer. Mark 16, 12, it says, Later Jesus appeared to two disciples as they were walking to their home in the country. Now, Jesus had risen again from the dead, mm -hmm. amen, and he had come across Mary and told her who she was. She went back and told the disciples. They didn't believe her. So now he runs across two more disciples after he's risen again. He says, uh... <coughs> It says that he did not look at he usually did. Verse 13. They went back and told the others who did not believe them either. Still, later Jesus appeared to, to the eleven apostles while they were eating. He put them to shame for their unbelief and because they were too stubborn to believe those who had seen him alive. Then Jesus said to them, So wherever you go into the world, tell everyone the good news. <coughs> Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These are miraculous. These are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. Anybody in here a believer? Amen. All, right. All right, here's what it says. They will use the power and authority of my name to force demons out of people. Amen. Amen. They will speak new languages. Mm -hmm. Now, this, all this is following believers, right? They will pick up snakes, not on purpose, <laughs> and if they drink any deadly thing, not on purpose, it will not hurt them. <laughs> they will place their hands on the sick and cure them. Amen. This is, these are the signs that follow you who believe. Now listen, verse 19. After talking with the apostles, the Lord was taken to heaven, where God gave him the highest position. Come on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Don't matter who the president is. Don't matter what the government says. We, right we serve one that has the highest position. All right. All right, listen, look at verse 20. The disciples spread the good news everywhere. The Lord worked with them. He confirmed his word by the miraculous signs that accompanied it. Accompanied it, accompanied it. So, so notice this, that nothing happened while they were sitting there eating. But when they received the word and then went out and began to share the good news, the Lord then start working with them. See, isn't it true that sometimes we want God to simply go before us, and then we, we as He go, then we want to follow Him. But sometimes you gotta go, and then now under this time in which we live, we go, and as we go, He connects with our going. All right. So you can't sit at home. And, you know, I can't sit at home. And say, Lord, I want a job. I want a job. I just believe Lord for a job. But I don't get on the couch, I don't get dressed, I just lay around in my underwear, eating bonbons, and eating ice cream all day long. Said, no, hold up, I gotta show him something. Isn't that true? I ain't never, I, I, well, I ain't take it, I had it happen one time that somebody called me for a job out of the blue. But that's not the norm. <laughs> I had it, most of the time I gotta go up, you gotta go out, and you gotta look. Now, the thing is, when they went out, when the disciples went out, they didn't go out on their own word. Amen. They went out on his word. As they went out on his word, doing what his word had told them to do, then Jesus started working with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want Jesus working with you? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, see, Jesus will work with you if you're giving him something to work with. 
Isn't it funny that Jesus, even though he's our Lord and our Savior, he has confined himself in our life to a position of help? Think about it. Remember, remember when, when, when Jesus told him he was going to leave, but he was going to leave the Comforter, the Holy Spirit? And he said he will lead you to all truth. And that he, the hell, he said, if I don't go away, he said, the helper will not come. Jesus confined, has come, listen, Jesus has confined himself in your life to the position of a helper. Amen. I don't want Jesus to take the lead. Jesus, I, I, will, I, I, I will work with you as you do what I tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Meaning he made us responsible. So if the world is in the shape that it's in, it's not his fault. <laughs> it's our fault. Come on, man. Why? Because he only works with us as we walk out his word. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So notice, look at the things that should follow you. He says, uh, these are the miraculous signs that will accompany believers. They will use the power and authority of my name to force demons out of people. So you better, listen, you better realize there's a real devil out there who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Say that, mm -hmm. right. See, everybody attributes everything to God. I even heard it today somebody was preaching. And, and, and everything is just a tribute to God. Everything's not a tribute. Everything's not God that's happening in your life. Mm -hmm. Some things are an enemy who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy you. Amen. Come on, amen. And so, we, and so what we have to be real careful of, and this is why we need, need his word. Because if we don't have his word, we may attribute things to God that's not even God. Amen. And, and if, you don't, if you believe something that's not, that's not of God is God, then why would you resist it? Mm -hmm. So that means something that is designed to steal, kill, and destroy your life can take you out because you believe it came from God. Mm -hmm. And God can't work with that. Why? Because, because that's not his word. Mm -hmm. And so he can't even offer you any help. <laughs> Because you haven't given him anything that he can connect with. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. A, lot of, listen, a lot of people die prematurely. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, because they attribute things to God thinking, well, God's using this to teach me something. Mm -hmm. God put cancer on me to teach me something. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the will of God for a minute. There, there's, there's two types of will, the will of God. When you see the Bible, it says, you, okay, you see the will of God, will of God, the will of God, and God, or it says God did, God did, God did. Mm -hmm. and, and, you, and you read that as God himself did it. Mm -hmm. And so somewhere in the translation, I don't know why they translated that, but they translate everything that God did. But really, uh, God has two wills. He has the perfect will, which is his will, and then he has a permissive will. Permissive will is what you permit. There are a lot of things that God said, I can't do anything about it because you permit it. See. Jesus told the disciples, whatever you bind on earth right. will be bound from heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose from, in, in, from heaven. What is he saying? That whatever you say in line with me, heaven will get behind you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But notice the initiator is always us. Right. So if you're a person that will not speak the word, <clears throat> that will not read the word, and you will not do the word, then the word, the living word, has nothing to connect with in your life. Mm. Oh. Your actions, listen, when you do the word, is an act of faith. Mm. You believe it, right? We do it because we believe it. It's just like we get up and we grab our keys and, and go to our car. Why do we grab the keys? Because in faith, we believe that those keys will start the car. Mm. Faith is what initiates God working in your life. The, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. And then it says, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Well, how do I seek him? I seek him, listen, by being a doer of the word. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just seeking God, but you're living in an utter rebellion towards him. Mm. You're not really seeking him. You're not, you, you, even without you saying I'm seeking him, you're seeking him every time you obey him. Man, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, so there should be some signs that will follow your life. You should have an expectation that God's going to do some things when you obey in Him. You know, you know why a lot of times we don't have confidence in God? Because many times our lifestyles are so out of alignment that it's hard to have faith that He's working. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed how hard it is for you to, to, to obey God when you look at your life and see all the disobedience. Amen. 
Is that God? No, that's the enemy. The enemy will come along and condemn you. And he's going to try to convince you that seeking God isn't worth it. Look what you just go mess up again. <clears throat> that is a lie from the pit of hell. Right. To keep you, listen, listen, you may be a thousand miles away from home, but guess what you got to do to, to change directions? Turn around and take a step in the right direction. It's amazing when you, when you make the decision to turn around. It's amazing how when you make that turn, here comes Jesus working with you. To get you back home. <laughs> right. He'll work with you. But you got to give him something to work with. And so what are we talking about? Uh, the Christ life, a life of responsibility. So, so let's, look at, um, let's look at Matthew chapter 25. And so I'm going to spend the rest of this time talking about talents. Talents. Talents are very key. I know we have different meaning, but we're, we're going to talk about talents. In Matthew chapter 25, and we'll start at verse number 14. And note, notice Jesus that before he, now in Mark 16 or 12, remember when Jesus, before he ascended, he gave them instruction, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning he made an investment into them. Mm -hmm. As they received what he said, began to practice in it, even though he went back to heaven, <laughs> he was still in the earth working with them by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All right? So, so, so this whole talent principle that we're about to read, really it, it can tie right back to Mark because he gave them a, a talent. Just like he's given all of us a talent. And if we're born again, we really have the talents of God in us. All right, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 25, starting at verse number 14, it says this. The kingdom of heaven is like a man going on a trip. He called his servants and entrusted some, some money to them. Verse 15. He gave one man $10,000, another $4,000, and another $2,000. Each was given money based on his ability. See, so in other words, God already know what you can handle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't it? He already know what you can handle. This is why listen, this is why you can't look at other people and what other people do to be the, the, the guideline for your life. Because God gave to you according to your ability. Aren't you glad that there are people who are anointed to be garbage men? Yes. Yeah. See, we look at it as, as a less than job. God don't. Because if they didn't pick up the trash, we are all in trouble. Say that. See, there, so in God, there's nothing too small or too big. Now, the world breaks it up like that, but God doesn't. And you have to understand that when you stand before him, you're not going to stand before him giving account for what I did. All right. Or he's not going to compare you with me. He's going to look at, what did I tell you to do? He might have told you to be a good father and raise your kids and raise them up to, to, to be godly children. That may be your assignment. Nothing wrong with that sign. But see, what happens is that we get disgruntled when we start looking at what other people do. Mm -hmm. Well, they got their own business. You don't even want your own business. Mm -hmm. You don't even want the responsibility of your own business. Come on. You don't want me filling out taxes and keeping track of and keeping track of records. And you don't even want to do it. So quit trying to be something that you really have no desire to be. Mm -hmm. Remember what the word says. It is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Right. That word to will means desire. That word to do is ability. God gives you the desire and the ability to do, his, do, to do of his good pleasure. Amen. You know why we get dissatisfied with, with what we're desiring when we're enjoying ourselves? We're looking at other people. Dude, I, be happy with what you got. And you, it, 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 have you ever been doing a job that people can look at as less than, but you really liked it? You just really enjoyed it. You just, you just liked it. People, wow, that don't seem like a really important job. It don't seem really, you know, and, oh, they don't make a whole lot of money. But you were happy doing it. Mm -hmm. You were making less money, but you were happy. You had peace. You had joy. You didn't mind going to work every day. You were content with it. But somewhere along the line, folks are whispering in your ear. 
<laughs> you should want more. You should want more. You should want more. See, you less than because you don't get more. See, look, look, you should look what they do. And now all of a sudden, this job that was making you happy and you were peaceful about it, now you don't even like it anymore because you're comparing yourself to other people. But the Lord gave these men's talents according to their ability. Everybody's not going to have a 500-member church. Everybody's not going to have a 1,000-member church. Everybody's not going to have a 100 ministry, ministry. But guess what? Each one of you still need the word. Amen. Come on, man. And see, what happens when people they get just drunk and they're all looking over there, over there, over there. Oh, look what they're doing. Okay, that's great. I'm glad they're doing that. But we ain't going to do all that. Come on. You see what I'm saying? He gives it according to our ability. Mm -hmm. Oh, see yeah. if you yeah. Okay, that makes sense? Yeah. All right, Let, let's keep reading. So he said, Eve would give him money based on his ability. Then the man went on his trip. Isn't that what Jesus did? Jesus went on the trip. Jesus went back home. Now, he went back home not to say he went back home for an appointed time because he's coming back again from his trip. <laughs> Come on, amen. But while he's going back home, he done gave us stuff to manage. Mm. He gave us he gave us talents to manage for the kingdom's sake. Mm. This is why you need to understand that nothing you have is yours. Mm. These are my stuff, my house, my car. No, hold on, that belongs to the Lord. Are you using it for his glory? Because mm. okay. you gonna have to because one day he's coming back and he wants you to give an account mm. of what you've done with his stuff. That he put in your hand. See, you wouldn't have, we wouldn't have anything had the Lord not given it to us. Say that. Isn't that true? Amen. We, we have what we have by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. We didn't earn nothing. Come on, amen. We couldn't earn salvation. We couldn't <laughs> earn the Holy Spirit. Come on, we couldn't earn love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, kindness. We couldn't earn any of that. But he gave it to us freely by our faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And God made a deposit into you. All right, let, let, let's keep reading. In verse 16, the one who received $10,000 invested the money at once and doubled his money. Mm -hmm. Verse 17, the one who had 4000 invested the money at once and doubled his money. But the one who received $2,000 went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. And hid his master's and hid his master's money and hid his master's money. Have you noticed that sometimes when he's talking about the one who had, um, the one who had, uh, sorry, ten thousand, he calls it. He, he said he doubled it. He doubled his money. He doubled his money. But then when it talks about the one who had two thousand, and it says that he went and buried his lord's money. Now why is the one takes ownership, the other one does it? <laughs> one simply lets it be the because see, when you go manage the things of God, you got to take responsibility for them. Mm -hmm. Can't blame somebody. Well, you know, it's their fault. It's their fault. No, hold up, man. You got the Holy Ghost. You know, you know the Holy Ghost will show you how to invest your money. Mm -hmm. If you ask him, if you listen to him. Mm -hmm. I, I've shared this story a lot, but I, I, I like to share because no testimonies never get old. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was working for Bell South, you know, I was sitting uh, at my desk. And I had my money, you know, into these different stocks and stuff and whatnot. And I'm sitting at my desk, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, he need, he said you need to take your money out of this and put it into the secure one. I said, okay. So I just got on the phone, called him up, and transferred all my money over to the secure account. A week later, the stock market crashed. Mm -hmm. I didn't know nothing about no stock market, but I knew, I knew the Holy Ghost. And the guy behind me lost $7,000 in one day. I lost nothing. All, right. all, because, all because I listened to the Lord. That's how the, the Bible says we're to be led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, how does he lead us? He leaves it up. As we make up our minds to be obedient, he then gives that, our, that our obedience gives him something to work with that he can lead. Right. He's not taking over. That's what you mean. He's not taking over your life. He's leading you based on your willingness to be obedient. Mm -hmm. See, I can't lead some, I can't lead somebody if they if I'm if I'm if I'm trying to get somewhere, I can't lead somebody who's not listening to me. Mm -hmm. Now, because see, here's the thing. If I don't know where I'm going, because you really don't know where you're going, Amen. you don't. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. Sure. You really don't know where, you, where you're going. <laughs> but you got somebody with you that if you make up your mind that I'm going to be obedient to God, you got somebody with you that already knows your tomorrows. Come on. And he knows every pitfall that the enemy has, has set you up for. And he will guide you through those pitfalls. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's not that he's taking over. He's just kind of guiding you as you submit. But he'll never override your free will. Because you can choose to drive in the ditch. You go, okay, fine. Drive in the ditch. You want to. It's your, your choice. But it, it, guess what? It's going to cost you a lot. But you can do that. All right. So let's go back and read. Uh, okay. Verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Now, why would he need to settle, settle accounts if it was simply just their stuff? He settled accounts with them because he wanted to know what they had done with what he did. He gave them. Mm -hmm. The Lord's going to want to know what you and I have done with what he gave us. Mm -hmm. And since we've been talking about the Christ, like what he's going to want to know is what did you do with the Christ life I gave you? Did you give it away? Mm -hmm. Did you use it? Did you invest it? Or did you just bury it? And nobody knew you were saved but mm -hmm. you. Because you know that people like that, right? They say, but they don't want nobody to know. Mm -hmm. when, when, they, when they're hanging out with sinners, they act like sinners. When they're at church, they act like church. And they, and they live these two separate <coughs> lives, hoping the two will never meet. I mean, what, what would happen if you, you ran to a church person and a, and a club person, and you both met at the same time, you in the middle, what you going to do? Mm -hmm. Praise Jesus, had, had a great time at the club last night. You're going to be torn, right? You're going to be confused. And, and what God says, no, I want you to make a decision. I want you to decide that you're going to just stick with me. Mm -hmm. To stay in my will, to stay in my plan, to stay in my purpose. Mm -hmm. So, so notice, let's, let's keep reading here. Notice what he says here. Uh, verse 20. The one who received $10,000 brought the additional $10,000. He said, Sir, you gave me $10,000. I've doubled the amount. His master replied, Good job. You are a good and faithful student. You proved that you could be trusted with a small amount. I will put you in charge of a large amount. Mm -hmm. Come and share in your master's happiness. <laughs> Ooh, glory. I mean, you, you went from working office with all the other people, and you got promoted to your own office, up there right, right next door to the president of the company. Uh -huh. Now everybody mad at you. <laughs> 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 Don't get mad when you get promoted. Why they get on? Maybe, maybe there was something in my character mm -hmm. that you didn't see because mm -hmm. you were too busy complaining. Mm -hmm. You were complaining, I was doing it. I was doing my job, praise God. Amen. All right, this is. <clears throat> Verse 22. The one who received $4,000 came and said, Sir, you gave me $4,000. I've doubled the amount. His master replied, Good job. You're a good and faithful servant. You prove that you can be trusted with a small amount. I will put you in charge of a large amount. Come and share in your master's happiness. See, that's what, see, this is why you can't just live your life for this life. Because one day there's going to be a day when we stand before him and we can enter into his happiness because we have been faithful over what he told us to do. That's going to be a great day. Do, do you want to hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? I do. I, I really, I really do. I live, I want to hear him say, man, I'm proud of you. You know, you know what we do when someone says they're proud of We think about all the stuff we did wrong. <laughs> don't we do? You know, well, don't we think about all that? Don't we think about all that? I'm telling you. What I, I, see, you looking at what other folk was able to do. But I know what I, I, know what I put in you to do. That's a lot of times why we're just growing up with ourselves. Because we compare ourselves to other people. And we don't measure up to their standard. But the truth of the matter is God's going to judge me for what he called me to do. And I have to stand in his plan for my life. And, and not listen, not look at numbers, right. not look at size, not look at popularity among people, but simply say, this is what the Lord called me to do, <coughs> and be faithful to that. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I do that, and, I, and that's, that's my goal every day, just to be faithful to what he called me to do, and, and touch the lives of people as much as I can, mm -hmm. for the cause of Christ. Look what he says here, all right, verse, verse 24. Then the one who received $2,000 came and said, sir... I knew that you are a hard person to please. <laughs> Your harvest, you harvest where you haven't planted and gather where you haven't scattered any seeds. I was afraid. So I hid your $2,000 in the ground. Here's your money. Now think about that for a minute. Sir, I knew that you are a hard person to please. So since you're hard to please, I just ain't going to do nothing. 
That's like your kid telling you, Mom, Dad, I know y'all hard to please by making up the bed, and I know y'all get mad when I don't do it right, so guess what? I'm not going to do nothing. I didn't do nothing with the bed. Here's my messy bed. Hold up now. We want to see some... See, we can, we can, we can celebrate your effort, but we cannot celebrate nothing. Amen. And a lot of people don't do nothing with their faith. I'm saved on my way to, well, hold up now. Who's going with you? <laughs> anybody, you taking anybody with you? Come on, amen. Because God, no, the Lord gave you enough life to give away so you can have other people come with you when you go. How many people will be in heaven because you went? How many people are you going to, how many people say, you know what? You may not have led me to the Lord, but man, I was going through a really hard time and you encouraged me to keep going. I want to thank you for that. I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. Mm. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. While I was locked up in jail, you was, came to visit me. Because Jesus is looking at all. He's looking, he's, he's looking at how did you give my life away? Because isn't that what Jesus did? He gave his life away. Amen. He gave his life. Listen, he took on our death so we could have his life. He who knew no sin became my sin so that I could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He's going to want to know. So you have a responsibility to what he's given to you. Now, I'm not trying to weigh you down with pressure, like, oh, I can't measure. No, 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 no. Just every day of your life, just live, Lord, today, how can I please you? Mm -hmm. Is there anybody's life that I can touch in some positive way? Amen. You, you never know the small things that matter to people. Right. Just asking somebody, well, how you, you know, you say you're going through it. How are you doing today? Sometimes just asking somebody that question turns their day around. But they just need to know that somebody cares. Amen. But, but don't we compare what we do based on what we see other people able to do? We don't. We, we just do what we do. Because he gave you according to your ability. Even what you were capable of. So quit looking at everybody else and just start, look, just start saying, Jesus, what do you want for me today? All right. You know, sometimes one of the best things you can do is just hug on your kids. Because mm -hmm. they need that connection. Mm -hmm. You say, well, they don't seem like much. Well, it may not seem like much to other people, but it's a, it, may, it may mean the world to Jesus. Amen. But we, we, we're, we're so busy trying to live and look into other people's lane. And we don't appreciate the lane he put us in. Mm. And here's the thing. When we do that, we waste our talents. Because now our motive for why we do what we do is off because we're no longer doing it for him, but we're doing it because of what we think people go think about us. Mm -hmm. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? Amen. Mm -hmm. I don't care what people think about me. <laughs> Come on, man. I ain't going to say my flesh, my flesh cares, but my spirit, I really don't care. Because at the end of the day, I want Jesus to be happy with me. Sure. Your flesh going to care about what people think, but that your flesh isn't you. Amen. Come on. Amen. Just where you live, not who you are. Now look what he said in verse 1. He, he says, I was afraid, so I hid your $2,000 in the ground. Here's your money. His master responded, you evil and lazy servant. You evil and late. Call them, didn't this call him late? Call him evil. Evil and lazy servant. If you knew that I harvest what I haven't planted and gather what I hadn't scattered, then you should have invested my money with the bankers. When I returned, I would have received my money back with interest. See, the Lord knew that, boy, I know you're not going to go out here and do business, but at least, mm -hmm. at least walk down to the bank and put it in a savings account so I can get my money back with some interest. Okay, you got $2,000. If you got $2,000 and one cent, I would have been pleased with that. At least I would have got some return on what I gave you. I get nothing from you. He just, you could take it in the bank and get interest off of it. I would, I would have been happy with that. Because, who I tell y'all, when I found a penny, increase. <laughs> right? It still increase. Mm -hmm. Enough pennies can make you a millionaire. Yeah. But don't we, don't we be at the gas? I don't know about y'all. But sign at the gas, I see that penny. I'm like, oh, it's just a penny. No, hold up. That's free increase, right? That's free increase. Look, 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 what do you think? I'm too good for a penny. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. If everybody on the planet gave you a penny, you'd be rich. Come on. How many people on the planet? Billions? Eight? Eight billion or so? If eight billion people gave you a penny, you'd be very well off. And what does God, the word say? It says, despise not the days <coughs> of small beginnings. 
God said, okay, will you be faithful to a penny? Mm. Oh, but you want me to give you $100. And you want me to be faithful to a penny, I let you pass, pick up, and you won't pick that up because you just don't think it's worth it. Because it's in water, too, you know. You want to get your hands all dirty. <laughs> don't we think like that? Mm. No, don't be, because I know I think like this. And I have to give it's an it's increase, praise God. All right, now. Amen. Amen. All right, listen to this. Verse 28. He says, take the $2,000 away from it. Give it to the one who has $10,000. Notice that. So, so you think God is against people having a lot. But the guy that made the most, he said, take that money, that $2,000, give it to the one that made $10,000. Mm -hmm. To whom much is given, listen, much is required. Mm -hmm. And see, the more faithful you are, the more responsibility God can give you. All right. He didn't say split it between the one that made 10 and the one that made uh, five, 4, 5, uh, 10, or whatever he said. He, he said, no, to give it to the one that made the most. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's been, he's been responsible. Mm -hmm. If you want God involved with your life, just be responsible with what you have. Be responsible with your thoughts. Be responsible with your time. Be responsible with your finances. Be responsible with your energies. Come on, amen. He said, be responsible. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you do that, because I'll, I'll work with you. With signs and wonders following. People, how do you get blessed so much? Oh, people always want to know the system. You know, do you have this system? <laughs> you know, I don't have a system. I have one system. You know what my system is? Obey God. Mm -hmm. That's my only system. Obey God. People, how do you do that? Obey God. How y'all be a, as small as y'all are and not be in debt? Obey God. Come on. Just obey, keep obeying God. You know, when the Lord said do something, I do it the way he says do it. I don't try to figure it out, understand it. I just trust God. He said, don't take us, take it this week, spend it here, put it there. That's just what I do. And it's still working. Amen. Our lights have never been turned off. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We ain't never got an eviction, though, because we ain't paid the rent. I mean, we, we ain't never had any of those problems. What? Because it's so big God. I try to do what he tells me. Am I flawlessly perfect? No. But I know how, to, if I miss it, I know how to roll it back and turn around and go the other direction. Come on, amen. See, some people, when they get, get into disobedience, they don't want to turn around because they got all these other people looking at them, and how will they look at these other people if they fail? Mm -hmm. But you are failing because you're out of his will. So turn around and go back home and get it right with your father and operate the way he says operate. That's the responsible thing to do. Amen. All right. Am I helping anybody this morning? Amen. amen. Look what he's read, verse 29. He says, to all who have, more will be given. Now, isn't that the opposite of how we think? Mm -hmm. he, said to, he said, to all who have, more will be given, and they will have more than enough. But, everyone will be, but everything will be taken away from those who don't have much. Why? They don't manage it right. Mm -hmm. And listen, not having much isn't just about money. Right. Not having much is about wisdom. It's about insight. It's about your time. It's about see, many people squander their time. They squander their energy. They give their energy to the wrong thing. Lord, forgive me. Mm -hmm. we, we, we squander our time and our energy doing the things we shouldn't be doing. Amen. Yeah. You know, time is time is a precious commodity. Because you can't get it back. <laughs> sure. Sure. Time is a precious commodity. Because you can't get it back. Look what he says to this. Verse 30. Throw this useless servant outside into darkness. People will cry and be in extreme pain there. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all his angels are with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. The people of every nation will, gather, will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. Mm -hmm. He will put the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, my, my father has blessed you. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you took me to your home. I needed clothes, and you gave me something to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. So notice that he was, was from talking about talents to how we be a blessing to other people. So, so it really wasn't about the money as much as it was about what we do with how we manage the people that we encounter every day. Ain't that amazing? He flipped that real quick. 
Because you know why? Because when you talk about money, it gets people's attention. Like, money, ooh, money, 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 money. Yeah. You talk about money. I mean, you know, you talk about money, man. Everybody ears perk up. Why? Because everybody wants it. And then he flipped the script on and said, now, here's what I'm really talking about. Look at how you took care of the sick, the poor, the, the, those in jail, mm -hmm. you know, those who were sick. He flipped it on to, get, to, to bring it back home. I'm not really talking about money, fellas. I'm talking about people. He flipped that, flipped, that, flipped that script real quick on him. All right, this is, all right. Verse 37, then the people who, who had God's approval will reply to him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or see you thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and take you into our homes or see you in need of clothes and give you something to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king will answer them, I can guarantee this truth. Whatever you did for one of my brothers or sisters, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you did it for me. We like to bless people that's really out there, don't we? That are really popular people. Let's bless them right now. God said, but what about the nobodies? What about the people that can't give you nothing back? What about the people that, that, that may never come back and say thank you? What about those folks? What about the people that, that, that society has written off? Uh -huh. What about those people who hold positions that don't seem that important and the Lord put on your heart to be a blessing and to help them through a rough patch and, but nobody will ever know? What about those people? Mm -hmm. All right. See, this is the stuff that God looks at. Well, remember I tell you, the, the greatest commodity in the earth, y'all, is people. That's the only thing God will be impressed with. When you and I stand before him, he's not going to care about what kind of house you lived in. He don't care about what kind of car you drove. He, what he's going to care about is how did you minister to people with the life I gave you? That's what he's going to want to know. Because that's what we're responsible for. We're responsible for people. Mm. All right, listen, let me keep reading here. Y'all doing okay? Mm -hmm. All right, y'all know y'all be doing more if it's football games on. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 41, then the king will say to those on his left, get away from me. God has cursed you. Go into everlasting fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't take me to your home. I needed clothes, and you didn't give me anything to wear. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't take care of me. They too will ask, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or as a stranger or in need of clothes or sick or in prison and didn't help you? He will answer them, I can guarantee this truth. Whatever you fail to do for one of my brothers or sisters, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me. Mm -hmm. He said, for me. For, the, for me. See, God's trying to minister to people through you. Mm. That's what he did. When we talk about the Christ life, that's what he gave us when we gave our, put our faith in Jesus Christ. He's going to want to know, the life that I gave you, did you give it away? Mm -hmm. Like I gave my life away for you? Look what he says here. Verse 46. These people will go away to eternal punishment, but those with God's approval will go into eternal life. See, by, by you having a talent, by you having a talent, it is God, it is God making an investment into you. And he expects a return. He absolutely does. Whatever, whatever you call to do, just do it. It doesn't have to be important to nobody else. Because as long as you know the Lord asks you to do it, it's important. All right. You may never get a trophy. You know, the water boy on the football team, he don't get no trophy. You know, you know, he don't get anything. But guess what? That Gatorade helps those guys when they come out the field. Have to, see, isn't it a blessing to you when people can minister to you without, without you having to think about it? Mm -hmm. They may not, they may not get accolade. Nobody's, no, no, I mean, nobody in the stand go, yeah, for the water boy, Woo, water boy. Nobody, nobody said. But you know what? As long as he's happy being the water boy, All right. accepting the fact that that's his role on the team, and he's doing his part. That's, it's all good. Right. You know, I watched my uh, John one time. Uh, someone was asking if he wanted to play football. He did not. John does not want to play football. He's not a tackle kind of kid. He don't want to hit nobody. He don't want to hurt nobody. But boy, he loved being the water boy. <laughs> he, he, man, I mean, he had that little jug running around with a squirt bottle. Everybody, they come out of the field. He hit them in the face. 
I mean, he loved it. And, and no people said, well, you know, you need to make him play football, make him, make him talk. I said, hold up. I said, it takes a, it takes a lot of heart mm -hmm. to serve people mm -hmm. and not get any accolades. Mm -hmm. But that's what he does. That's his heart. And I'm telling you, that some of you, you're, you're just like that. You're just the water boys of life. All right. Nobody's cheering your name. Nobody's you know, giving you accolades. Nobody's saying how great you are. Nobody's trying to put a ring on your finger to thank you. Nobody's trying to buy you no know, gift certificates or nothing like that. But every day you do what you call to do mm -hmm. without any accolades. That's valuable to God. That's your heart. And you, know, and you feel alive when you do it. Just keep doing it. Proverbs 3.5 says this. And I, I read this a lot, but I'm going to close on this. And it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Now, now when, it, when it talks about acknowledging God, what, what, that, what that word means, it means to know. Mm -hmm. It means to allow him to advise you. It means to allow him to answer you. It means to allow him to appoint you. I mean to acknowledge. And when, it's, when we talk about acknowledging him, we're saying to him, tell me what to do. Show me what to do. Instruct me on what to do. That's what he's saying. When we talk about acknowledging God, that means, that means we shouldn't even have our own personal opinion apart from him. Because mm -hmm. he says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So why? So that before you, before you gather a personal opinion, you get him on the scene so he can tell you what you need to be saying <laughs> and how you need to look at it. But he said what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And don't lean to your own understanding. There's a lot of things going on now that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. Why this happened? Why this going on? I trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm not. I'm kind of like, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. I know some folks love living down here. This is, the, this is the box. Man, I'm like, come quickly, Lord Jesus. I'm looking forward to Jesus parting those east, eastern skies and coming back and getting me. I'm waving at Trump. I'm looking, someday I hear a horn. I'm like, is that the Trump? <laughs> you got it yet? I am, man. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Because this ain't my home. Anybody got a job that's real hard, that you really have to work hard some days? It's like, woo. At the end of it, like, woo. Man, but, oh, okay, so I got one young man, right, because they work up. Reggie, I'm like, you know, I'm my job, <laughs> I need your job, and your job, and your job. I said, oh, but, but here's the thing. What's the one place you always look forward to? Oh, Eight o'clock. Go home, don't you? Right. But see, this, is our, this world is our job, and this job gets hard sometimes. It wears you out sometimes. You see the foolishness of people, you go, oh, my goodness, how long will we deal with this craziness? And you, you look... But because I understand that, I'm always looking at like, man, I'm ready to go home. Why do you say I'm ready to go? I would like to go home. I want to finish my race first. But I really want to, I really want to look forward to going home. Amen. Because this ain't my home. Because this, this, see, what's real to you? Is the life beyond this life real to you? Or is this all there is to, to you that's real? Is this life it? Because this ain't for me. This ain't all it. This is just a speed bump. And it's in, in the road of eternity. And I, and I say that because if you understand your time is short, then be responsible for what God has put in your hands. Whatever area you have, don't despise what you do. Enjoy your life. All right, man. Because you ain't getting another one like this one. You might as well enjoy the ride while you're on your way to glory. Mm -hmm. that you, enjoy the ride. You can, you, can, listen, you can find joy in anything you do. If you invite the Lord in with you. Amen. And then wrong picking up garbage with a dude and then preaching Jesus to him while you're picking up garbage. A wonderful thing in the world. Come on. Because you forget all about the garbage. <laughs> Isn't that true? Talk about the Lord. And so I want to encourage you in that. The, the, the Christ life is a life of responsibility. We have responsibility to the Lord and what he's given us. Now, if you don't know what the Lord has imparted into you, I, I would challenge you to find out. Because the more you find out about you, the more you know what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I pray that blesses you. I pray that helps you. And next week we'll, we'll deal with the Christ life a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, you have been blessed by God to touch the lives of people in some way.
and be committed to doing that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for the word, and we thank you for your people, and Lord, we just pray that you would help us. And even those areas of our life, Lord, we're not being as responsible as we should. We thank you, Father God, for the Spirit of God just revealing those areas to us and helping us to make the adjustments that we need to make. Lord, Lord we thank you that for each person gathered here, that they will find joy in walking in the thing that you have called them to walk in. Mm -hmm. That they will not be disgruntled or dissatisfied with their lives, but they will find joy in the midst of everything, knowing that you are there with them and that you are working alongside them. Father God, we praise you for this. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God.